Hi, my name is Daniel Żarski. I am a researcher at the Polish Academy of Sciences. Professionally, I am concerned by fish reproductive biology and the development of the aquaculture sector. With this movie, I would like to introduce you to the freshwater aquaculture sector, based on examples from Poland. Here we go. The beginning of freshwater aquaculture is dated to thousand years before the Christian era. However, the actual expansion of freshwater aquaculture started around 600 years ago, when people started stocking the fish into man-made earthen ponds. Up to this day, the sector is still developing. The major breakthrough, dated to second half of the 20th century, is related with development of hatchery technologies, enabling precise planning of the production process, which ever since is based on timely provision of larvae and juveniles for outgrowing phase. This continues until this day, when aquaculture became the primary source of edible protein coming from water. Aquaculture is currently the fastest developing branch of animal farming worldwide. Its technology is being constantly improving and fine-tuned, and many new fish species and populations are being domesticated in various areas each year. Freshwater aquaculture is a very important part of the food sector, providing each year nearly 300 thousands of tons of food into our households. Freshwater aquaculture on the European continent is dominated by two fish species, common carp and rainbow trout. First, being traditional food consumed mostly during the Christmas Eve, is produced in a traditional way since hundreds of years. Second one, trout, became popular and widely accessible product in shops and restaurants. The two species, with two completely different markets and production technologies, are driving two completely different types of businesses. However, they have something in common. Production of those two species in Europe is generally stagnating since about two decades. So, as you can see, a freshwater aquaculture has a very long-standing traditions in Europe and really, really devoted community working in this sector. However, a stagnation in production over the last two or three decades sheds light on the need of innovation as a potential driving force of further expansion of production in Europe. And the challenge is huge because production of carp and trout is ongoing in two completely different production systems of completely different character. Let's take a look. Aquaculture of common carp is based mostly on the traditional hundreds of years old farming process with the use of earthen ponds. These ponds became important components of the landscape and unique habitats for many animals, making them a very important player in creation of small retention as well as preservation of local biodiversity. Despite various roles carp ponds are playing nowadays, we need to remember that the ponds are still production sites of fish for consumption. So, how it works generally? 
fish are stocked in the pond and along the growing period they are fed with the plant-based diet, mostly cereals. This makes the production of common carp a very close to organic type, especially that the intensification level is very small and the stocking density is also very low. But what are the ponds actually? They are earthen embanked constructions supplied with water from slowly flowing rivers, located usually nearby. You should be aware that the areas used by the common carp farms are huge and they count usually in hundreds of hectares. Therefore, the pond farming is often perceived as a business requiring huge space availability for potential new farms. Thus, currently, the majority of the earthen pond-based production relies on the facilities constructed decades ago with very limited possibility for establishing new farms. For example, in Poland there are 80,000 of hectares of earthen ponds producing about 20,000 tons of fish. And only very few, usually small, new ponds were built in the last 30 years. We need to consider that carp aquaculture is an extensive type of agriculture production. From one hectare of pond, usually in Poland, approximately four tons of fish is produced. It's not a lot. However, there is no really big interest in intensified production of common carp since there is a serious concern of potentially decreased product quality when production would be intensified. So, how this business can compete with a huge food industry on the market? And where is the room for innovation? And in the end, how we can produce more fish using an earthen pond infrastructure? Production of carp is pretty stable since decades. However, development and introduction of hatchery techniques into the carp production technology released many pond infrastructure in Europe which were originally used for propagation and production of larvae. And these unused ponds, constituting around 20% of the total surface of pond farms around Europe, is the released potential. And this is the room for potential innovation as well. This system, called split ponds, is an excellent example on how unused ponds can be transformed into fully feasible and fully functional intensified production systems. The water here is recirculated so that the excess of the nutrients can be removed during passing along the artificial river behind me. This allows us to keep here at 20 times higher stocking densities than normally. So this is the possible way how to transform an unused ponds and to gain more profit and produce more fish. This system is another example on how we can use a potential of the earthen ponds to produce more fish. The system is called Pond in Pond. Do you know why? This is another example on how we can use ponds for intensified production of fish. Fish in the system are kept in these cages, in these small areas. Next, water is moved through the system thanks to this airlift pump. In this way, we are removing the excess of the nutrients and the pond serves as a specific water treatment site. However, these production technologies are still in their infancy and many projects are still to be developed until they will reach the commercialization phase. But it already gives an idea of huge potential of abandoned infrastructure and shows how earthen pond based aquaculture may be transformed. And what is your idea? How would you use this infrastructure? How to change the phase of this part of the sector. The floor for innovation is really big and it belongs to you. And now let's move to a completely different aquacultural world.
Drought aquaculture is currently the most modern freshwater aquaculture production technology. It contributes to both production volume and technological advancement in the sector. It is a technology which is very receptive to every novel technical solutions as well as farming practices. Next, the farmers are verifying and challenging these solutions in commercial environment, giving us the knowledge on many different aspects of fish production. It is kind of driving force for many areas of freshwater aquaculture. However, this sector is also facing many difficulties. First of all, production of trout is typically requiring high amount of highest quality water. This has limited the expansion of typical flow through farms due to the limited number of water sources such as rivers and springs. Consequently, the expansion is currently dependent on partial recirculation of already exploited rivers what enables increment of production volume. However, this, in turn, generates high energy consumption. Besides, operation of such a recirculated farm require highly qualified staff which is capable of managing the production effectively. Nevertheless, the technology is already very impressive and is still being developing. And the expansion of the trout production is currently not relying on using more water and using more land, is more relying on increasing the effectiveness of production using the resources already available. Therefore, the trout production sector is so receptive for innovation at both technical and technological levels. This brought the modern trout farms to the point where there is high interest in selection, also with the most advanced genomic-based selective breeding technology. This technology can relatively quickly improve, for example, the growth rate, feed utilization, disease resistance or any other trade leading to increased overall production performance. This, however, would not be possible without very well established and advanced hatchery technologies, which are characterized by highly effective protocols. Also, the closure of the broodstock indoor and control over the environmental factors allowed extended, nearly year-round production of larvae and juveniles. This became the key to precise planning of the production as well as effectively conducting selective breeding operations. And all of this is the systematic answer to the main constraint of the aquaculture sector, the main challenge actually, supplying the market with fresh fish all year round. But this is a completely different story to be told later during the summer school. Trouts, contrary to carbs, are being fed exclusively with compound feeds during the fattening period. For production of feeds, as well as for the feeding process, the most modern technologies are being employed, along with the highest quality ingredients. Some says that this makes the trouts eating better food than any other farmed or domestic animal. Feed for rainbow trout is so well formulated that fish need to eat only 0.9 kg of feed to grow up to 1 kg. Of course, the fish are fed only until their satiation, usually from 1 to few percent of their body weight a day. So it still takes some time to grow until commercial size. However, this is still impressive achievement and shows that trout farming is really well-established production technology. So why this sector is not growing exponentially in Europe? The answer is not so easy, as the problem is multifactorial. It is related with market and production technology-related obstacles at the same time. First, very important point is related with the water usage, since the trout production is requiring quite a lot of water of very high quality. As mentioned before, these are usually streams and springs which are feeding the production raceways. However, we need to also emphasize that trout require quite cold water, usually below 20 degrees of Celsius, to be fed and grown effectively. 
This is one of the most important issues, since there are significant shortages of water in the streams and rivers during the summer period. Implementation of recirculation technology is solving problem only partially, as the hot summers are potential threat to the production by heating the water too much. But there are also other problems, such as the product quality issues, being depending on the type of the production system, and several others, what will also be later discussed in other parts of our autumn school. Regardless of the problems and obstacles the aquaculture need to face all the time, there's a one clear take-home message. Freshwater aquaculture, both trout and carp, needs readjustments and innovation if wants to expand. How to achieve that? Maybe the recirculating aquaculture is the answer? Or maybe alternative production systems, such as the split ponds or ponting pond systems? What is the answer? What do you think?